Hi, I'm Javis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use unwind segues. Those can be created in order to pass data between view controllers that you've just dismissed, or, you, well, they allow you to dismiss themselves and pass data back to the originating object. Very exciting stuff, that is. So, um, much like a standard segue, the, the unwind segue allows you to uh, pass data, but in this case it's the basically the second leg. So a standard segue allows you to pass data from one view controller to another, but then in the olden days you had to dismiss it manually and it was difficult to get the data back from the dismissed view controller. So the unwind segue allows us to pass that data back or hold on to a reference of that. And the unwind segue also dismisses view controllers for us. We had to do that manually beforehand and unwind segues make it possible, well, that we you know have to write less code. I'm going to show you a little example app here and we're going to utilize Xcode 6.1 and iOS 8.1. We're going to do this in Objective-C and because we don't need a real device, we're just going to make do with the iPhone simulator. So in principle, how do we do it? Well, it's a very simple app. We're going to start with the single view application and we're going to have two view controllers. The first one that comes with the template and the second one that we're going to add ourselves. Then we're going to, after hooking up a few buttons, we're going to implement a little bit of code that we write, uh, which is just a standard method, and I'm going to call this an unwind method. We're going to write that code in our first view controller, so therefore this method is called as soon as the unwind segue is called. It's an IB action, so we're going to hook it up in the storyboard on our second view controller. This seems a little bit unintuitive because the code isn't actually in the view controller in which we're going to hook it up. So it's uh, it's a bit of an unadvertised feature there in Xcode, but it does work and I'll show you how. And uh, as soon as one of these buttons is called that we're going to hook up there, it will automatically pass the data back and dismiss the view controller for us. Are you ready? Let's hack some code. I'm going to start with a brand new Xcode project here with a single view application and I'm going to call it Unwind Segue. I'm going to do this in Objective-C, and we don't need core data for this exercise. I'll just put that on my desktop. Well, as a single view template goes, uh, there's not a lot to see in our storyboard. We have literally just a single view controller, and we're going to add another one of those into here. I'm just going to drag that down from here into there. I'll move those apart a little bit. And I'm going to start with my very first view controller here, with this one, with the original one. And I'm going to go and find a button down here. I'll add that in the very middle of the screen. And I'll just call it Start the Segue. Now this is a standard segue that we're going to emulate the functionality that somebody clicks on this and then another view controller, i.e. this one, is being brought up. So let's do that. Hold down Control and drag from the button over to your other view controller. Let go and see this brand new amazing action menu here. And if we were to say show, this would emulate a push as in a master detail kind of push segue, but we don't want that. We want this to be modally presented. So the difference is that this one slides in from the right of the screen, whereas this one, the present modally slides in from the bottom of the screen on the iPhone. So I'll do that, and uh, right now if we run the app, we just press the button and the next view controller would come up. On the view controller, I'm going to emulate this uh, behavior that there is a text field in which we can type in some text, and then there'll be a cancel button up here and a save button up here. And pressing either of these will then dismiss the view controller, go back to this view controller, and then we'll see the message that we've typed in here displayed via this view controller. That's kind of the, you know, that's the idea here. So in order to make that possible, I'm going to select my new view controller, and I'm going to head over to the editor menu and select embed in navigation controller. This looks scary because technically we're pushing from here to this, and then we'll see these results. And the only reason why I'm doing that is because I can easily add these two buttons that I was talking about a moment ago. Let me find those. They're at the bottom of that very long list here. And there they are, bar button items. 
So I'll drag a couple of those in, one over here, and another one goes over here, and I will use the um, inspector on the right hand side to set the identifier. So on the left one I will say cancel, and on the right one I will say save. The advantage of doing it this way is that these things are automatically translated on iPhones or iOS devices running other languages than English, which is nice. So let's drag in a friendly label so that next week we can remember what we were doing here. Label goes uh, somewhere here and we want a single text field that will go in the very middle. I'll make that nice and wide here. And to finish off the layout, I'm going to head over down to this little triangle button here and select Add Missing Constraints. A shame this is presented outside the area that I'm recording here. Sorry about that. But I will go to the first view controller as well and do the same thing. Add Missing Constraints. And then Auto Layout should kind of you know, work out of the box here. Right, we haven't written any code yet and we will get to that next. I'm going to open a new tab so that in one tab I can have my storyboard open, as in this one, and in the other tab I will then do some coding. Well, first I'm going to create a new class under iOS Cocoa Touch class. Maybe I will call this Message View Controller, and it's going to be a subclass of the UI View Controller. Hit Next, then add it to your project. Right. So far, so good. Back in my storyboard, before we continue, I want to associate my new, con my new view controller with that custom class. So head over to the inspector over here and just start typing message view controller. Perfect. Now I'm going to switch to that assistant editor view and quickly hook up these things here. We want our save button to be a property, so control drag from that somewhere uh, into the um, message view controller M file here underneath interface, between interface and end, and that go, I'm going to call that save button. Very descriptive. Same with the cancel button. A bit of space here in between, and we're going to need a reference to our text field too. Great. While I'm here, I can do that uh, in this window quickly. I will switch over to the message view controller header file and give this guy a public property. I'll just call it the message. It'll be a, an NS string. And I'm doing that so that this class here can hold a value that we type in the text field that the previous view controller can then read and that'll be the message that'll be displayed. And this is how you can pass data from that second view controller back to the first one with an unwind segue. Let's go back to the implementation file. In fact, I'm going to do that in another window here. There we go. Less storyboard. That's good. Let's focus on some code here. On the bottom here, this uh, new class has a stub in which is commented out which is uh, marked as navigation. I'm going to uncomment that because this method will be called maybe less comments is good here. Uh, this method is going to be called as soon as our user presses either the cancel or the save button. So as soon as that happens we can make things happen in here. Anything we like. For example we're going to say if this was if the save button was pressed, um, then we're going to transfer the value from the text field, if there is any text, into the message variable. Let's do that. So if self text field text length is bigger than zero, that means it's safe to assume there is text, then we're going to say that the self the message equals self text field text. This would happen no matter which button is pressed. 
So in order to make sure the cancel button isn't pressed, we're going to um, add a quick statement above here. And we're going to ask for the sender property. So the sender is the guy who, who delivers this thing and that in that case we can because we have references to either button we can we can detect is it the cancel button in which case uh, let's not read out the text field there that's all we need here and then down here otherwise read out the text field in which case it has to be the save button and if there is any text, we will do that, otherwise this method returns nothing. That is really all we need to do here in our message view controller. But the unwired segue gets written in our first view controller. And here's how we do that. Let's switch over to the implementation file. And first of all, I'm going to import my message view controllers header file here. We won't touch the view did load or did receive memory warnings here, so I'm going to collapse those. Less is more. And here we're going to write a method stub that is very similar to the one that we've seen in the previous view controller. Let me just quickly switch back there. Um, uh, it's the prepare for segue sender method. Our method is something that is an IB action here. So let's start with IB action, and it, it can be can have a title, anything we like. So I'm going to call it back to the start, and it will take one parameter, which is a UI storyboard segue, and I'm going to call that one segue. I know this sounds a little bit weird right now, but in essence. This is the code that is executed as soon as the unwind segue starts to kick in. And it is at that point that we can say, hey, if our previous view controller, through which we can get a reference thanks to the UI storyboard segue, we can then see if there was a message uh, transmitted back to us, and if so, we can then display that. So the way to do that is, again, this is very similar to if you've explored templates that have uh, that grab references from a segue to the view controller that's sending it. So we're going to do that right now. We're going to first of all grab a reference and that's the reason why we imported the message view controller. So we're going to create our own message view controller and I'm going to call it uh, source and that will be the segue's source view controller. Do you remember in those um, other templates or those other, uh, when you send data from one con or from the source view controller to the destination view controller, usually you'd say something like uh, segue destination view controller, and that's where the segue is going. But in our case, we don't want that. We are now going to grab a reference to the view controller that was at the other end. So it's the reverse process, and that'll be the source view controller. And as soon as we have that, we can have another little if statement and we'll say if the, our source view controllers, uh, the message exists, then we would like to write that out as a log message. Does that make sense? It's a little cryptic right now because it's not hooked up to anything, so we'll take care of that in a moment. But basically what I'm saying, if our uh, source, which is, um, well, let's, let's just say it's the, uh, the, the message view controller. I could, I could, instead of source, so that we don't get confused here, I could call it the message view controller. Maybe that's, you know, that's more clear. Let's do that. Uh, message view controller, and we're going to go message view controller there. It's a bit longer, but it, it's more, it's sort of more descriptive. So we're going to create our own message view controller, and we're going to take that from a reference we're going to get through the Segway's source view controller. And then we're going to say, if our message view controller has a message, so if it's not nil, then we're going to write it out. If it's uh, nil, we're not, going to, we're not going to write it out. So far, so good. We've written the code, but it's not hooked up to anything yet. So in order to do that, we need to go back into the storyboard. 
and I can do that in full screen here. Now the thing is, even though the code for this is technically in this view controller, we need to hook up the buttons from that view controller in order for that to work. And we do that again with another funky control click. Uh, this time we're going to hook up either button to this guy, which is the exit object in a way. So as soon as one of these buttons is clicked, I'm just going to control drag from there onto there, and then another action menu comes up with suitable methods that could be caught. In this case, it's back to the start. That's the title of the method that I've written in my other view controller. So I'm going to hook that up, and here's where that appears. And I'm also going to hook up the save button, of course, to the exit object. There we go. So now, if either button is called, two things are going to happen. Well, three things are going to happen. First, in our message view controller, this method is called the prepare for segue sender method. And this happens so that we get a chance to um, prepare our view controller uh, for the fact that segue is about to happen. So in our case, we're going to quickly transfer the value from the text field to our own message variable, but you can get much more complex here and you can create your own object and populate that object with several values from what the user may have just entered there. And um, so that's part one, this code gets called. Then number two is this view controller, the, the segue gets initiated and the view controller starts to be dismissed. So uh, in the olden days, we had to write code for that, that we had to manually dismiss the view controller. We don't have to do that anymore. So the storyboard uh, object takes care of that for us. So the view controller is being dismissed, but a reference is still being held on. And then in our other view controller, this method is called the unwind segue method that we've written and now hooked up. Now this sounds all fun. Let's try it out on the simulator with the iPhone 5S. Let's see what happens here. When I click that button, we should see a view controller appear. It does indeed. Uh, here it goes. This is a text field that should be a little bit larger. Uh, well, let's try out if I'm, I'm going to do that in a minute. So I'll click cancel first of all. Nothing happens. Also, watch out for this field, which will be populated with a uh, with our message hopefully in a moment. So that's great. I'm going to type a message. Perhaps you know, hello will suffice. If we could read it here. Let me hit save. And sure enough, we're getting our log message as expected, which says the method the message was hello. Okay, let's have a look at that storyboard and see if we can fix that thing. I'm gonna clear all constraints and just bring them all back. That's the easiest thing. Add missing constraints. There. Auto layout is a wonderful thing, isn't it? Okay, there we go, perfect. Hit save. And there it goes, the message was, this is great. And let's try out the other thing. If I don't type anything and hit save, nothing happens, but the view controller still gets dismissed. I have a little demo project here, exactly the code I've written. I've put it up on GitHub. Uh, my URL there is github.com forward slash first Lewis. And the project you're looking for is Unwind Segway. That was it, I hope this was helpful. If you like this video, then uh, Please share it with friends, family and total strangers and subscribe to my channel. I will see you next time for more exciting iOS stuff. Bye for now.